prolonging of the youth can happen, increasing the longevity can happen, or increasing the life span can happen. That is the supremacy of Chavana Prasha, which are told in this particular chapter. <clears throat> now, there are various spectrum of diseases when it comes to lifestyle disorders. So, lifestyle disorders can cause heart problem. Lifestyle disorders can produce uh, irritable bubble syndrome. Lifestyle disorders can produce psychosomatic disease. Lifestyle disorders can produce premature uh, musculoskeletal degeneration. Now, how it actually works or how it actually happens or in short, what is the samprapti of lifestyle disorders? Everything begins in the gut, no matter where exactly the damage happens. The damage may happen in the brain, the damage may happen in the heart, the damage may happen in the kidney, wherever it is. But origin happens in the gut itself. Kaya Agni, that is the importance of, that is why importance of Agni is given and correction of the Agni is told, removal of Ama is told for this reason only. And it is nothing but revitalizing, resetting, restoring your natural healthy gut microbiome. What happens because? Because of environmental factors and all these uh, lifestyles, whatever I have told just now, they cause dysbiosis of the gut. And all these gut microbes produce various kinds of essential enzymes for the vital activity of the different organs of our body. So if at all, if your brain has to work properly, an enzyme that is prepared by your gut has to go from gut to the brain via gut-brain axis. Only then your brain works. And if that particular microbiome is not producing the required enzyme that is required for the activity of the brain, you remain inactive, bored. That's what you feel bored or upset for silly reason. You always feel dull, foggy. That's the reason. Depression for mind. I won't use the word depressed, but sad, low, all that is because of inactivation of that enzymes because that particular microbe is not functioning in your gut. Same, you are feeling, even though you are eating healthy and nutritious food, you won't have that energy. All the time you feel low, all the time you feel tired, fatigued, even by doing minor physical activity, you get exhausted very much. That is called as muscle exhaustion. And once again, the essential <clears throat> enzyme required for the vitalization of muscle is once again produced by the gut. So food just nourishes the muscles. So mamsa from Rakta Datwagni, mamsa portion may happen by sara or ahara. But activation of this function is because of the enzymatic action and that enzyme is synthesized once again by your gut. So any, anyway, I, I'm just giving you the example of musculoskeletal system as well as the brain. But everything, the essential enzyme has been synthesized by the gut. And from there, the enzymes goes to the respective organs to do its respective functions. And your poor lifestyle destroys all these activity and synthesis of essential enzymes by your gut. Because of which all your vital organs will not function efficiently as it was functioning during the availability of those enzymes from your gut. That is the direct relation between the lifestyle as well as gut microbiome. Eat bad food, wake up late, yes, this can disturb the gut microbiome. Now, how it acts actually? And car, uh, cardia, brain and kidney. So this is the directly involved organs in the manifestation of the disease. Why? Because whenever the person is stressed, may that be work-related stress or a physical stress or an emotional stress or any kind of stress or anxiety it is. So it produces adrenaline because of which the heart beats faster, cardiac output increases, peripheral vascular resistance increases because of which the patient will suffer from hypertension. And when there is hypertension, that produces renal damage because of which there will be destruction of the glomerular membrane and one by one nephron gets damaged. Ultimately, the kidney failure happens. Apart from that, stress can directly damage the kidney because stress causes increased secretion of cortisol. So increased production of cortisol produces excessive accumulation of fat. So the people who are having a lot of stress 
ಈವನ್ ದೋ ಈಟ್ ಫುಡ್ ರಸ ರಕ್ತ ಮಾಂಸ ಮೇದ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ಮಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ನರಿಶ್ಡ್ ಅಸ್ತಿ ಮಜ್ಜ ಶುಕ್ರ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ನರಿಶ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪಾಟ್ ಬೆಲ್ಲಿ ಆರ್ ಎನ್ಲಾರ್ಜ್ ಅಬ್ಡಾಮಿನಲ್ಸ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಫ್ಯಾಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ವಿತ್ proportionate hands limbs chest head the all are okay but only tummy is enlarged only fat is accumulated in the abdomen yes that is the stress giving him that or her that kind of enlarged tummy or enlarged abdomen that is nothing but cortisol enriched obesity that is because of stress once again so hence reduce the stress automatically let all the rasa rakta mamsa meda and after that that is asti majja shukra get nourished well then automatically the belly fat will reduce so maybe ex- just mere exercise will definitely not help mere dieting also will not help well again eating lemon and uh, uh, honey whatever it is will never never help as long as he has stress in his mind ache in his heart this tummy will go on increasing in the size what is on is going on increasing in his production and nothing no workouts no diet no gym instructor can help him this is the relationship between heart brain as well as kidney well so here automatically reduce your stress levels then the cortisol secretion won't be there and that is also another reason for infertility where stress is there because of which cortisol will be secreted and because of cortisol all that you eat will be converted into fat and after fat that is asti majja shukra is not nourished and when shukra doesn't get equal nourishment well that may lead to clibium hence stress has got direct relation with infertility or clibium now i would like to continue the same explanation describing stress and trimarma that's what i have told you how heart acts when there is stress by increased production of adrenaline by increased cardiac output increased heart rate and increased blood pressure how brain produ- uh, responds to stress maybe once again by raising the adrenaline levels and neurotransmitters because of which nervousness and uh, hypothalamus may produce some of the hormones because of which those kinds of tremors sweating can happen and how the kidney responds that is by producing the especially the suprarenal glands producing cortisol and that products pr- produces the mechanism of fat accumulation hridaya basti and including shirohridaya all these are trimarma and this is the reason why it is been told as trimarmiya siddhi because if you manage these three you can manage the life now in a simple terms i would like to explain how exactly stress creates a pathology in your body so please understand stress properly here here stress i'm not talking about subjective stress uh, of course we all need a little bit of stress otherwise we all will be uh, there is a proverb idle mind is devil's devil's workshop a person who doesn't have any work is the one who always creates a problem it may be in the office it may be in the class anywhere So if at all if the person is busy with the work or task well he will not be he or she will not be involving in any of these kinds of politics maybe only involving in the work that has been assigned to him or her little bit of stress is definitely required but i am not i'm telling about over stress giving too much of work load to a person targeting abusing uh, yes hurting them emotionally verbal abuse and all that i'm telling that kind of stress physical as well as mental and emotional stress that level of stress i'm talking about now how your cell responds it's not one organ it's your entire body reacts to stress don't think that stress only produces problem to your heart don't think that stress always produces nervousness in your brain and please don't think that stress impacts the suprarenal glands of the kidney and produces cortisol every body sorry every cell in your body responds to stress and the response to stress is cell injury there will be injury there will be damage one or the other kind of damage during each type of stress that is why in case of tisreshaniya adhyaya we have told about prajna parada prajna parada asatmendriyartha sanyoga parinama where the persons dhi driti smriti vibhramsham karmam yat kurute ashubam prajna paradam tam vidya sarva dosha karanam or sarva roga karanam yes that is nothing but the one which produces cell injury it produces cell injury unicellular a group of cell causes tissues tissue causes organ damage organ damage causes 
organ system damage and system damage causes the damage for the entire organism. Everything begins in the cellular level. It's always not macroscopic. It's microscopic and then it goes to macroscopic level. So everything begins in the cellular level. That's why in one day or two day, it's not a story of one day or two day. It's always Vipra Krishna Nidana, not Sunny Krishna Nidana. How your cell responds to an injury. So cell injury means the type of response, how the damage is recovered or faced by a cell. That is a definition of cell injury. What kind of damage the cell faces and what kind of response the cell gives to that particular damage is all about cell injury. So there are two types of response. Reversible, where completely it recovers. Say, for example, you have fallen down from ride, uh, riding a cycle. All of us have played. And of course, there will be a wound in the knee. And after a few days, the wound will be completely healed. That is what reversible cell, uh, cell injury. Irreversible cell injury. Sometimes there will be damage, will be deeper. And in spite of the normal cell growing there, a fibrous tissue formation happens because of which there will be scar. It's also healing. But instead of normal cell, there is a fibrous tissue or a scar tissue that is pro produced. So some of the marks that you have fallen down are still there today. Especially the surgical scars or cesarean scars are still there today because it is deep and that's been replaced by fibrous tissue formation. Still, that is irreversible cell damage. And the next one is adaptations. We all have different kinds of adaptability. Say, for example, in a group of working place, we do have various kinds of response to our upper authorities. Some people will scold. And how is your response? Maybe some people will ignore it. Some people will, uh, people who are very sensitive may cry. Some people are aggressive. Maybe they will give back to the person who have done that. They'll fight back. Or some people will just quit the job and go to some other organization. These are our different kinds. Some people will adjust. Some people will get used to it. Some people will get immune to it. That is how different kinds of adaptations we have for different kinds of environment. It's the same in case of our cell loss. So maybe there is continuous stress because of which a particular size of the cell will be no more produced and the cell size will decrease. The size of the cell will decrease. And that is what we call it as atrophy. Sometimes the cell will be increasing in its size. Maybe if it was one centimeter before, now it is five centimeters. So that five centimeter huge cell can face the challenges. I'm just giving an example. So people getting thick skin for a abuse or whatever. So you should have a thick skin. Don't be sensitive. That's what people say. Now hypertrophy is something like that. Developing a thick skin. The size of the cell will be bigger to face the challenge. Hyperplasia, increase in number. That's what we call it as union. See, one person, please don't go. Let us all go together and fight. Then unity will be there. And because of that unity, we may win. So that's what we say. So hyperplasia is also something else. One cell may not be able to face that particular injury. So maybe there is multiple cell growth there. Increase in the number of cells. There were early one or two cells before. Oh, there are hundreds of cells grown there. So hyperplasia, increase in cell number. Metaplasia. That is what migration of cell. So you may not like a company, you will quit that company and join another company. Same here also. A particular cell in a particular locality. Consequently facing the stress. So now that particular cell will migrate from that place and maybe it may go to a new place. So one piece of it. This place here, it will completely change its organ itself. Say for example, Endometriosis is one such disease where the uterus-like tissue from the endometria will get displaced and go to other organs also. Very rarely it happens. So just like uterine bed is produced during the time of menstruation. So if the same kind of tissue gets migrated to the lungs, what all changes that happens in the urine during menstruation in the lungs also same changes will happen. There will be severe pain in the uterus at the same time. Intensified chest pain also will be there. And this can also happen in the complication of endometriosis if there is dysplasia. So this is the understanding of cellular adaptations. If none of this happens, ultimately the cell dies. The cell death, that is necrosis. Either it will die and decompose or other healthy cells will eat it. And 
the unfit cells will be eaten by the other remaining cells, that is apoptosis. These are the response of cell injury for various kinds of stress. Now, what happens in lifestyle disorders are one among any of these. Either there is damage or there is adaptability or there is necrosis. So, whenever there is hyperplasia, metaplasia and dysplasia, we are talking about cancer. We are talking about endometriosis. Whenever there is atrophy, we are talking about cellular shrinkage. We are talking about dementia. We are all talking about Alzheimer's. We are talking about Parkinsonism. We are talking about senile degenerative disorders. When we are, we are talking about hypertrophy, we may talk about tumors, mass, neoplasia. When we talk about hyperplasia, we are talking about neoplasia also. Necrosis and apoptosis, also the same thing. Deterioration, degeneration, early degenerative disorders, genetic mutation. Also, all these are one or the other kind of cell injuries, which is a part of lifestyle disorder pathology. Genetic testing, is it required for lifestyle diseases? Or can it your DNA predict? Yes, of course it can. So, if a parent is continuously consuming a particular kind of bad lifestyle, there will be changes in its gene. And when this particular gene is transmitted to the offspring, then it becomes Adibala Pravrita Roga. And lifestyle disorder becomes Adibala Pravrita Roga in that person. Otherwise, lifestyle disorder is a Dosha Bala Pravrita Roga. If a father is having a Dosha Bala Pravrita Roga, and if it changes, if there are changes in the genetic level, where you call it as mutation, then the upcoming generation, this defective gene will be there as a dominant gene and then it becomes a Adibala Pravrata Roga in the upcoming generations. The lifestyle disorders can lead to genetic disorder of future generation, not immediately, but of course, after a few generations, there will be Adibala Pravrata Roga because of bad lifestyle. So that is why you have to stop bad practice and bad life. It's just not for you. It is for the future generation as well. So healthy generation, if you need to have, there must be alterations in the lifestyle. Now, I would like to give small examples, two examples I will give. What exactly is lifestyle disorder as per Ayurveda? A simple thing has been told in Dhinacharya. You have to wake up at Brahmi Murtha. That is all has been told. Now, imagine, I am telling, including myself, how many of us are actually waking up between 3 o'clock to 6 a.m. in the morning. So, okay, 6 a.m. most of us can, but maximum, maybe after 8, 9, there are also some people who wake up at 11 a.m. in the morning because previous night, maybe they were working night duty, uh, night shift or late night overtime duty. You can call whatever it is, maybe Saturday night, holiday, weekend, whatever it is. So, next day morning, what happens? If there is a variation in the nitra. You know very well that for proper sleep, you require the two enzymes in both melatonin as well as the serotonin levels, in predominantly the melatonin secretion. So when a person sleeps late, the melatonin will be secreted lately and because of which the person still continues to sleep even after it is morning because melatonin is still in the active phase. Whenever uh, And there is a relationship between melatonin as well as pancreatic juice. As long as melatonin is there, or melatonin is in the active phase, pancreatic juice cannot secrete. Pancreatic juice becomes recessive. And whenever there is a dominance of melatonin, pancreatic juice cannot be secreted or cannot act. And when you wake up that time, you, you still feel sleepy, you still feel heavy, you are not fresh. Nobody of us are waking up fresh in the morning. Either alarms wake you up or some work or responsibility wakes you up. It's not a fresh healthy wake up at all for any one of us. And soon after we wake up, we, are, we have that foggy, still sleepy, heavy headedness. That is because melatonin is still there. And when melatonin is still there, pancreatic juice will not be secreted because of which you won't feel hungry in the morning. And that is why food intake in the morning is not possible. So they have get bloating whenever they eat food forcefully. And because of that, they even skip early mo sorry morning breakfast they skip because they are not hungry they are not hungry because they are not ha having their pancreatic juice secreted they are not having pancreatic juice secreted because their melatonin is still lingering in their head and poor 
intake of food in the morning, that is no breakfast in the morning, definitely causes very severe damage to the nerve cells because whole night you have not eaten anything and glucose is required for the activation of brain. And in the morning, your brain, muscle are in the active mode. They need glucose and you're not having breakfast. These brain cells as well as muscle will be deprived of glucose. And that is why you have muscle exhaustion, muscle fatigue, tiredness in the evening because of this reason. So food intake is not important. Breakfast is not just important. Breakfast having at the right time in the presence of pancreatic juice is important. Now, whenever there is no uh, digestive juice, of course, pancreatic juice, you can correlate to that of jadrani. In the absence of jadrani, obviously what happens? Indigestion happens, that leads to ama, and ama is the primary factor for utpati of all the diseases. One more simple uh, information I would like to pass it to you. So here, Ahara Sevana Vidhi, they have told you should not uh, eat in a hurry. You have to chew the food properly and then swallow. You know what? Very recently, they have, there has been a study done. Dental problems and GIT disorders. There is a direct correlation. People with ill-fitted denture or no tooth, their digestion also will be very, very poor. Why? This is because of this reason. If there is no mastication, the food will be in the complex size. And if the food are in the complex size, the digestive juices cannot further digest them because it is still in the complex stage. So it has to be broken from complex to compound and from compound to simple. When the food is brought to the simple level, only then the digestive juices can act upon it. So if you eat in a hurry, those big, big pieces, if you gulp and swallow without masticating properly, of course, there is no digestion happening and the digestive enzymes cannot act on it. And this is what Ajirna is. What they did, they selected such group of people, they corrected their dentures, they fitted new dentures for them and educated them to masticate the food properly before swallowing. They gave the numbers also. Each time when you eat anything, you have to chew for 30 times before you swallow. No matter what you eat, even though you are eating a banana, or you may eat any hard thing, no matter what. You have to eat at least for 30 and more. So they did it. So act of mastication improved their digestion. Just achieving properly enhanced their digestion. No medicine, nothing. So those are all simple things. Now whenever we are hurry, we are rushing out, we are buses late that we gulp, we swallow, we don't chew properly. And yes, this is a part of our lifestyle. We are always in a hurry. What, whoever you ask, there is one easy answer. I have no time. That is the answer you get. Well, you don't have time to achieve your foot also. Then you have a lot of time for spending your rest of your life in the hospital. That's what I say to my patients. I get time with a doctor. They'll say, uh, I, can you, you have to take one um, shodhana and uh, you have to give your 15 days to me. Oh, so much of time I can't give. I'm very busy. Okay, fine. It's okay. Rest of the life you can definitely aram say spend in hospital with the saline bottles besides you and all your savings will be donated to the hospital. That's what I say. Of course, whoever says time is precious, I say this to them. It's not about time. It's all about priorities. Well, the diseases that are non-communicable and that can be caused by lack of physical activity, unhealthy eating, alcohol, substance, uh, sorry, uh, substance use disorders, smoking, tobacco, all can lead to heart disease, stroke, obesity, type 2 diabetes. That's all I have told you. So all these come, everything is under uh, lifestyle disorder, including PCOD, though it is hormonal, stroke, though it is neurological, depression, though it is psychological, obesity, though it is metabolic. You, you please see this line, osteoporosis, musculoskeletal, PCOD, hormonal, stroke, neural, depression, psychological, obesity, metabolic, vascular. Again, all these are different diseases of different system, yet a lifestyle disorder. There are not one, they are different. That means your lifestyle can attack each and every system of your body. And when I talk about PCOD, you might have observed PCOD is increasing in young girls these days. Even every first BMS students, they come to me. We all have a health checkup for newly admitted students. I just ask, and do you have any health problem? They say, I'm diagnosed with PCOS. I do have uh, menstrual irregularities, amenorrhea, scanty menstruation or something. So why all these things are happening? There are two reasons for this. All of you might have consuming milk. You can just see there is a seal in the milk packet, GMP, circle, genetically modified protein. They are very, very bad. The other one which damages, I just showed 
slide uh, where yes they are the one which can change your gene and lead to genetic disorders of the future generation and the milk in the packet contains it and also unfortunately these uh, so called farmers they inject oxytocin injection to the cattle in the interest of producing more milk and this hormone comes via milk and when the young and non pregnant or non lactating girls consume a milk that contains oxytocin obviously you imagine what can happen an oxytocin hormone or a prolactin hormone is present only in those bodies of females who are lactating or who have just delivered whereas a non pregnant or non lactating girls will not have those two hormones now in the milk if it is there just imagine what kind of hormonal imbalance that can produce and that is why a girl is having pcos these days so now please i ask uh, them to stop consuming dairy so even in my house also i started having uh, planning to have or uh, get a milk from a person who really brings like of course they add water and all but definitely drinking diluted milk is much better than drinking milk that is having gmp or genetically modified protein or oxytocin hormone in it definitely in case, when men drink it, when, when a male child drinks it also obviously there will be some problem because of it so that is all are because of both ahara also vihar also to come to lifestyle disease is a combination of non communicable diseases environmental diseases as well as occupational diseases everything comes together because of occupation we have a we, for a particular kind of life you need luxury life of course you need to work hard okay and that occupation gives you stress and because of that stress you have a disease that is why role of satvrata swasthavrata rasayana chikitsa is there in our classes all these three are to prevent and cure lifestyle disorders the socio economic history personal history are present in the k sheet if you see second bms we have a k sheet the history taking is there and there is socio economic history and personal history so you have history of personal illness history of past illness uh, medical history gynecology history obstetric history and you have these two why that is to understand what kind of lifestyle he or she is having and there is always a rule epidemic pandemic will turn to epidemic and epidemic will turn into endemic and that there will be genetic mutation because of which the person will have new new kind of disease and in unpredictable forms and that is what i give an example of raised risk of cerebrovascular accidents after covid so every we are all those stroke hemorrhages are increasing or thrombosis ischemia whatever it is these kind of things are increasing after covid and yes that is the contribution of addition of more endemic disease because of pandemic well very importantly toxic work atmosphere narrow deadlines performance based self appraisal burnout all these will cause lifestyle disorders very toxic work atmosphere i think uh, there has been a lot of uh, uh news in uh, maharashtra i mean i think pune in there is one uh, company where a girl committed suicide uh, a ca young ca uh, employee of a reputed company lost her life because of toxic work atmosphere and work stress so suicide attempt why is that so of course we say you should be strong mentally you should go for meditation whatever it is there are some sensitive people where they may not be able to concentrate on treatment and they are more very ambitious and that makes them very good employees and if you are good then all the problem will be for good people only so this is also that is what toxic work, work atmosphere is speak about and yes lot of infertility cases we see so whenever he or she gets involved in the uh, intercourse or whatever it is in their minds the person still has okay i have to send an email to this person okay my work done statement is not done okay tomorrow i am going to talk to my client yes in what way i have to please my boss these are the things which is running when they are having intercourse actually speaking they are not fully involved in this because of which the ejaculatory actions or any kind of uh, praharsha is not available there and hence impotency delayed ejaculation pre ejaculation erection dysfunctional uh, conditions are seen which leads to infertility all these are psychological as well as neurogenic well there is one very beautiful message we should learn from few of the countries especially japan and australia because technologically they are very well advanced industrialized even places like tokyo is said to be the most busiest and workaholic peoples are there 
yet how they are managing these kinds of atmosphere or lifestyle disorders because they are rooted you see they still follow the traditions even though they are modernized they are 50 years ahead of us actually but still the medicine the practices the culture the tea ceremony whatever it is related to health they will follow always they will, they are never late when they come to food they are never uh, compromised when they come to selection of food, exercise or anything. In the office itself, many a times, virtual meetings and all, they conduct walking in the treadmill every uh, hour or so. You are supposed to walk for a particular distance, uh, uh, 200, 500 meters walk is every 40, after every 45 minutes. Because in front of, especially these traders or engineers, they'll sit in front of the computer. They sit a lot. That is what sedentary is. So the, their legs will become very inactive. So it's, there is a rule that they have to get up every 45 minutes, have a walk and come. Whenever they are talking or attending a phone call, they are not supposed to sit and talk. They will walk and talk. So these kinds of work culture or adaptation, I, may, I can say, it is there. And selection of beverages like tea, herb, instead of uh, uh, other kinds of beverages, drinking herbal tea, etc. kind of practices, meditation, and some kinds of relaxation therapies, uh, giving he uh, holidays to health restoration, insurance. And also there is a very good practice of uh, forest bath. So it is Shinrin Yoko. You disconnect from the your uh, work, completely get detached, put your phone off and go to the forest without footwear, without mobiles, without internet. And that is what digital detoxification is told. So listening to the forest hum, the fresh air, everything that reduces the stress level, enhances melatonin, enhances serotonin, brings good sleep, reduces blood pressure, uh, normalizes the heart rate. And the person, when he comes back from his holiday to work, he is revitalized completely. Now, this kind of work culture should be there in our country also because we are the one who have all those kinds of beautiful treatment protocols. So why can't we adopt them in our work atmosphere? We have a limited uh, work hours or a holiday for restoration of the health or consideration in their salary or whatever it is. These kinds of schemes has to be adopted to avoid burnouts, toxic work atmosphere or to prevent lifestyle disorders because of overworking. Very interesting, we have one of the samskaras that is Vana Prastha or Sanyasa before the life ends in everyone's, it's one of the shortest samskaras. We were wondering why a person has to get detached from Grahastha and go to the forest and take Sanyasa. That is because cut off all from all these kinds of worldly things because they are the one which gives stress and lifestyle disorders. So more you are behind money or position or post or promotion or reputation in the uh, society or something behind materialistic world, more your health gets deteriorated. So cut off from these kinds of worldly materials or materialistic life and get detached, go to the forest. That is the actual life where you get enlightenment and you're after the old age, nobody will die because of any disease. Everybody will have a natural death. Now, this is what we should talk about. What is natural death? Have you ever seen any natural death? What is natural death? No one knows. So how many of us have seen a person leaving 100% fine, he goes to sleep and next day morning doesn't wake up? That kind of death have anyone seen? That is the kind of death any, everybody should expect for. Everybody dies out of terminal illness, severe diabetes, heart attack and these kinds of whatever dementia, depression, stroke, cerebrovascular accident. There's one or the other because of health issues, there is a death. And that is because of the contribution of the bad lifestyle. Well, we have Ayurvedic medicines, treatment protocols, as well as lifestyle restoration policies in our classes. And I am sure in the upcoming sessions, there will be very interesting sessions related to individual disease as well as individual treatment protocols. And I request all the listeners to register or to listen to all those sessions and enlight get enlightened and please inform your students, patients also and get out of this kinds of poor lifestyle and restore the health of humanity. With this, I once again thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity and uh, I'm not sure whether question session is there if there is in anything particular, maybe you can expect the answers in the particular session. And if you have any doubts related to today's presentation, I'm ready to answer you.
over to the organizers. <laughs>